Adobe has just released a game-changing tool called Generative Fill, and it's taking the creative world by storm. This incredible AI-powered feature integrated within Photoshop allows you to bring your creative visions to life in ways you've never imagined. With Generative Fill, you can effortlessly transform simple text prompts into breathtaking artwork, all without leaving the familiar Photoshop environment. Imagine typing a few words and watching as your ideas materialize into stunning visuals right before your eyes. With complete creative control, you can add, extend, or remove content with precision, all while maintaining the integrity of the original image. Buckle up, because I've never been this excited to show you something new. You can read all about Generative Fill by clicking the link in the description down below, but I'm gonna show you how to do this right now because it's out on Photoshop Beta. So in the Creative Cloud desktop app, all you have to do is scroll down to Beta Apps and then find Photoshop Beta and click Install. So I'm gonna drag in my first image right here to show you how to actually use this. Whenever you drag it into Photoshop for the first time, you're gonna see this pop up where it's gonna tell you all about generative fill and you can click learn more if you wanna learn all about it because it's really awesome to take a look. When I typically start with this, I head over here to the crop tool where I press C and then I click on the edges and I hold Alt on a PC and that will constrain the proportions and drag it out. So I'm just gonna expand this as far as I like. Now I'm gonna click the rectangle selection tool, go in a little bit on my image and then click and drag around here just like so. You're gonna wanna head down here to this invert selection button right here. So if you press that, it's going to select everything besides what you selected. All you have to do is click generative fill. You can leave the prompt blank because then it's going to analyze the entire image and try to match it to the best of its ability. And just like that, we have a crazy image going on. And the cool thing is down here, you have these arrow keys. So now I can hover through these and see which image I want that looks the best. In order to bring up the generative fill, all you have to do is select any of the selection tools, but I like the polygon lasso tool. And I'm just gonna click and drag wherever I want my generative fill to start and end. And then once you make that selection, you'll see this little prompt down here that says generative fill. Click that and then type whatever you want. Underwater statues, and then click enter. So that's pretty cool as you can see, but it has a couple options. So we can click these arrow keys right here and you'll get a ton of different variations to choose from. That one's kind of bland. And if you don't like what you're getting, you can either change your prompt or you can click generate again and again and again, and it will keep generating more options for you to choose from. So this is a photo of my girlfriend and I, and I want to expand this image because I don't actually have a wide shot of this. We only did vertical on this day. So I'm gonna bring up the crop tool and move out the selection till I get something that looks pretty wide like that. Click enter, and then I'm gonna bring up the selection tool. Just click in a little bit on my image and do a rectangle selection around here and then click this invert selection button, generative fill, and just click generate. Because again, when you don't do a prompt, it's just gonna treat it like almost content aware did in the past. And that finished generating and oh my goodness, does that look good. The crazy thing is, is like looking at it, it actually matched the perspective of our lines right here, which is crazy. But I can go through here and see what different options we have. This one looks a little bit more realistic minus this thing right here. And the final one is this one right here. It looks like they put a wall right here. I'm kind of looking at this shadow right here like there's nothing going on. So I'm just gonna bring a rectangle selection on the top right here. And then I'm going to type in generative fill, uh, let's say roof. That is insane. And then like this, and then bring it back down. And then I'm gonna type generative fill, beach in the distance with a cruise ship. I didn't exactly do what I wanted, but honestly, it's kind of unique. So let's just change the prompt right here and just say beach in the distance. So that one looks pretty clean. It kind of looks like we're in the middle of this like shop thing right here. And let's keep going on. That one looks like we have palm trees on both sides. Honestly, all of these look pretty dang good. It actually works with removing stuff too. So once I do this and do the invert selection, just generative to fill, to fill in the space, I'm gonna show you how you can remove lights. So that one painted this out pretty awesome. And let's go in here and just make a selection. I'm gonna select around these lights right here. And all I'm gonna do is type no lights and click enter. This is changing the way we use Photoshop and it's making it so much faster. I remember back in the days I was using the clone stamp tool to paint things out and remove people. But this tool right here will actually change how we do that. 
So I can click through here and see the different options. This first one had a little black line right there, but this one looks pretty clean. And now zooming out, it looks awesome. The great thing is, is like it's non-destructive. So if you click on your first layer, which is the one that generated the whole scene, you can actually click under the properties to see the variations of the scenes that it generated. Like this one looks sick because we have a little door right here, but you can honestly get creative with it and make whatever you want. If you guys are enjoying today's video and you made it this far, please click that like button and let me know what you think down in the comments below because this is mind blowing and you can start doing this right now. Something that I often do is when I'm playing around with this, if I don't like the image in certain areas or how it's looking, I can actually go through here and just kind of drag around all over the place and then click the generative fill button with no prompt because whenever you do it with no prompt, it'll just analyze the scene and it'll try to make it blend a little bit smoother. So that's the first one we have, which looks a lot smoother. And then this is the next one that we have. Let's try to draw a little circle right here and then make a little pool of water. So we have a little pool and as you can see, it's got some reflections going on, but let's see what the other ones have. This one looks really cool. Like that's insane. It has reflections and it actually shows the ripple of the water. This one looks cool. I think I like this one because if you zoom in on this, look at the detail of here. The sun's coming from over here. So this is actually processing which direction the sun is coming and it's adding the shadow right here to replicate the sun, which is mind blowing. And we actually have highlights right here that match the edge of our salt flats seamlessly. So in a matter of seconds, you can kind of create whatever you want using Photoshop's new tool, Generative AI. If you guys found this video helpful in any way or you liked it, click that thumbs up and let me know what you think down in the comments below because this stuff, this stuff is crazy.